beautiful and thank you for clicking on today's video. If you have followed me on any of my social medias, even a little bit, you'll know that I brought home a brand new family member very, very recently and his name is Bailey. This is Bailey. Bailey's actually a little bit sick right now. He's been sick the last couple of days, so he's a little lethargic. And he just got some fluids from the vet. So now you're hydrated and you're gonna be healthy once we give you your medicine. Oh, so this is Bailey. He is 10 weeks and a half-ish old. He's sweet as can be. Um, he is half-ish poodle, half-ish golden. His breed is a golden retreat or a golden doodle, but um, he's like a poodle mix, which is great because a lot of my family has allergies to fur. He is sweet as can be, but today, <laughs> oh, yawns. Okay, baby, go lay down. Um, he's a little sick right now, so you'll see more of him in videos upcoming, but that's my sweet boy, Bailey. Um, wish him well in the comments. He, sh he should be fine, but um, yeah. Do you want your bone? That's Bailey. And if you're new here, you should know that I am a minimalist. I live a very simple lifestyle, a minimalist lifestyle, and a lot of what I talk about on this channel is centered around that, whether it's about conscious consumerism, slow fashion, or anything in between. Now, being a minimalist, conscious consumerism is at the forefront of a lot of my purchasing decisions. So if you're not subscribed and you're new to this channel and this is the first video of mine you're clicking on, you can consider this video like a haul, but also like an anti-haul because there's a lot of stuff I purchased and a lot of stuff that was recommended to me that I didn't purchase just from thinking through what I needed and what I didn't. And as somebody who lives a more minimalist lifestyle, I tend to not overconsume really at all. But just like with any sort of a large transition in your life, sometimes you do need to buy stuff for that transition, whether it's a puppy or a baby. Sometimes you're purchasing things that only last three months, six months, a year or two years, and then you're done with them and you can pass them on to the next home. And I think that even through the lens of minimalism or just life in general, that's totally okay. Um, so today I wanted to show you all of the stuff that I got for my sweet boy Bailey and also all of the things that I didn't get for him that were recommended for me and how I kind of thought through the process of what I would buy and what I would not. Additionally, I do want to show you how to get a hold of some of these bigger ticket items for a lesser price second hand. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. <laughs> Jumping right into it, I have this basket that I keep upstairs and then there's this little spot where I keep downstairs and this is just toys. I'm going to blast through them pretty quickly because, I mean, toys are toys. You don't really need to, yeah. Okay, so, can you tell I'm tired? <laughs> I have this little bunny, which is a flapper, wrinkly toy that he likes a lot. I have this rope that I got at a garage sale, so it's second hand. This one came from the breeder. She gave it to us in a little puppy pack um, and he likes this one a lot. This bone is part of a puzzle toy. So puzzle toys are good for dogs and especially puppies because they help them kind of work their brain. So this puzzle toy is from Chewy, obviously, and there were three little stuffies in it for him to be able to stick his little face in and get out. Sometimes I'll also put a couple of pieces of kibble in there to kind of get his brain working while he's trying to find them. So there's that. Then I got this from TJ Maxx that I haven't introduced to him yet because it's a little bit industrial for his little puppy jaw. This egg is one of his favorites along with this chicken. Both of these are from Walmart. I think they were like a dollar each. A leather toy with little tassels for him to chew. This turtle, which hasn't been introduced to him yet, but hopefully soon. And then this went viral on TikTok, um, so I bought it. It's a jolly egg. And the way it works is it's basically like very difficult for your dog to get a hold of. So they're just kind of constantly chasing it and it helps them sort of get tired. I tried to show Bailey it mm, probably two days ago and he didn't quite get it. So I'm thinking when he's a little bit bigger, uh, that might be a fun one for him to keep him entertained by himself for a little while. And then also I have this puzzle toy, which he loves a lot, a lot, um, with six little squirrels in it. He hasn't quite figured out how to get the squirrels out without like considerable help, 
But when he's running around being a little freak, um, I'll throw them at him and he'll sort of like get really excited about every new squirrel that um, hits the ground. So that I believe is it for toys with the exception of a couple of chew toys that are just kind of for his jaw. So these are the toys that we play with him with. And then these are more the toys that he always has access to. So he has this one, which is just sort of like a, just for chewing. And I'm gonna put that there because it's actually where it belongs. And then he has two little Nyla bones. I'll put a picture right here. One of them is in his crate upstairs right now. And one of them is with him right now. And he's with my husband. So I can't really show you those right now, but it came in a three pack with two sort of rubbery, chewy bones, and then one treat bone, which he has already eaten. That's it, I believe, for toys. Let's go ahead and move into the category of food, because I think that's the next biggest category. Okay, so next is food, and I did go a little bit overboard with all the different little treats, but that's because I wanted to figure out what he likes and what he doesn't, that way I can purchase less later on. Um, I also do intend to make some treats for him. I just didn't want to overwhelm myself with that in the beginning. And I'm really glad that I made that decision because the last couple days I haven't even been feeding myself properly, yet alone being able to make him specialized treats in addition to his three meals a day. So um, starting off, I'm going to start with his food. I originally, let me go get it actually, hold on. Okay, so I originally, jeez. Uh, I originally purchased this dog food from Paw Tree because this is what the breeder was feeding our dogs. And I've been told that you don't want to like switch their diet so abruptly because it can be really catastrophic on their little systems. Additionally, she said that it was really great um, nutritionally, so I thought that it that was true. However, my sweet little boy has been having tummy troubles recently and the vet said we're still waiting for some tests to come back, but the vet said it might be diet related because this particular brand of kibble which is the brand paw tree no tea no shade because they make other great products that my vet likes but editing me here it was not food related although what i'm about to say about the food is still true so we're going to be keeping the bags because the return policy for paw tree isn't actually as good as we thought you have to pay to ship it back and the food is heavy so that costs a lot of money Anyway, we're going to wait till he's an adult dog and then give it to him and then probably not repurchase it. But the food was not making him sick. He has a parasite that he's being treated for now. He said the grain free wasn't really good for dogs long term. Like 10, 20 years later, you're seeing or 10, 12 years later, you're seeing dogs with like really bad heart issues if they're grain free their whole life. Additionally, he said it's better to have, because this food is like good for puppies, good for adult dogs, good for seniors. But my vet said that it's, you really should specify their food. You should get something for puppies because if they need nutritional things differently than a dog or a senior dog would need. So he recommended like three or four brands and one of them was Kirkland, which I'm so excited about because this bag of dog food was not cheap. <laughs> But this bag of dog food was, and it's vet recommended. Like, um, I don't, I'm not a vet, so you don't have to take what I say, but this is what my vet recommended. Anyway, so once he's off, right now he's eating chicken and rice until his tummy troubles get solved. But once he's off his chicken and rice, he'll be moving to, oh my God, he'll be moving to the Kirkland puppy gibble. <laughs> And I'm gonna return the paw tree stuff. Luckily, they have a pretty good return policy. Okay, moving on to the rest of food. So again, from Costco, I got these, which are like jerky, but they're just chicken and vegetable glycerin. So clean ingredients, really simple. Good for doggo. I got these puppy teething rings. He's not very interested in them. And when I went on Chewy to return them, they told me to just donate them to a shelter. So once he's able to be like potty trained fully and he's able to be in the house for more than like an hour or whatever, I'll add this to my list of things to do to go donate it to a shelter. But um, nice return policy of Chewy. Next, I have sweet tater fries. These are just dehydrated uh, sweet potatoes. So again, simple ingredients, good for doggo. 
I also purchased some frozen blueberries and I think frozen bananas as little treats for him because there are some human foods that are actually good for your dog in, you know, the appropriate quantity. But this is not that. <laughs> I have these little training treats. Right now we've been training predominantly with his breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we'll split it up half and half, half he'll eat from his bowl and half we'll do some training with. But um, up until he had his tummy troubles, I would keep these in this little pouch just on me at all times in case he was doing something that I didn't particularly love and I wanted to be able to redirect him somehow. Um, so these he likes. And then there's also these that I'll move into once these are gone. Then I have Paw Tree freeze dried chicken liver. This is something from that brand Paw Tree that my vet does like. It's just dehydrated chicken liver. Um, you know, good little treat. We've been doing that with puzzle games. Oh, speaking of which, I forgot one more puzzle game. Sorry, one sec. And just to be said, this is stuff that I purchased that's dog specific. Anything that I've DIY'd or like human food that I give him as treats, not right now with the tummy troubles, but in the future, all of that's not gonna be mentioned here. Uh, but I did forget to mention this puzzle toy. <laughs> he, This puzzle toy I like a lot, it's on Amazon. The reason I like it is because you can go easy, medium, or difficult. So because he's only 10 weeks old, we went really easy with it where we put some kibbles in the bottom and then we just put the carrot in like really lightly so he could very easily grab it out. But as he gets older, we can put them in deeper. We can put kibbles like in here. Um, so this is a good one, I think. It was kind of expensive. I think it was like $30, but uh, it can grow with him. So that's good for stimulating his little puppy mind. Next, I have Paw Tree. This was given to me by the breeder in the Puppy Go Home Pack. This is chicken liver and ginger freeze-dried treats. Very low ingredients, really kind of like nice and safe, not a lot of extra crap put in there. And then we have Nature's Balance Original Biscuits Sweet Potato and Chicken Formula. He has not tried these yet either. I don't want to go overboard with his treats like right when we get them because A, that's not the best for his tummy and B, like it's just, that's like overload. So a lot of this stuff he hasn't seen or tasted yet. More in the food section. These are dehydrated chicken treats from Trader Joe's. So far these have been his favorite treat of everything we're trying. And right now with his tummy troubles, these are the only treat that he can have because it's just dehydrated chicken. Then I have, again from Paw Tree, wild Alaskan salmon oil. Um, before his tummy troubles, you're gonna hear me saying this a lot in this section, but before his tummy troubles, he would get one pump of this in his breakfast every day. And then by the time he went to the bathroom and I took him up to see his dad, uh, his breath stunk. So I'm probably gonna be buying a breath spray or something like that soon, but uh, salmon oil, it's good for their coat. Then I have something that my vet actually really liked and said that it would be great if I used this for the rest of his life is the Gastro po Pro Plus Daily Supplement for Dogs and Cats. Um, and it is a probiotic supplement. The reason that I'm giving it to him right now as a puppy is because developing his like gut microbiome right now, it's always important, but right now it's particularly important because that's where a lot of a dog's immunity comes from and also like allergen response. And the more healthy of a gut microbiome he can have, the more likely he's not gonna have allergies and not gonna have, you know, tummy troubles, blah, blah, blah. So um, he's been getting, right now it's a half capsule a day, but when he gets older, it'll be one or two. So he likes that a lot, actually. Then we're going into, because he's had tummy troubles recently, we've been giving him chicken and rice. He doesn't like the flavor of the rice, so we had to buy some unsalted, chicken broth to make the rice in so that he'll eat the rice so that his bowel movements get to be a little bit healthier and then we can get back to the kibble and training him and doing all of that stuff. So um, no sodium. Dogs don't do well with a lot of salt, kind of like how humans don't, don't do well with a lot of salt, but the threshold for dogs is much, much lower. So um, I'm hoping, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm hoping if I cook the rice for tonight's dinner in this, he'll be more likely to eat it and then more likely to get healthier stools uh, sooner. So that being said, in addition, on that same vein, 
pumpkin is really good for helping um, dogs with sort of digestive issues. So I've been giving him some of this. It's from Amazon. It is a powdered pumpkin. My vet said it was great. It's uh, pumpkin, pumpkin seed and organic apple. So I mix a tablespoon of this and a tablespoon of water and I'll either put it on his food or I'll put it on a lick mat. So this is a lick mat. I have two of these. One of them is currently in the freezer with some of this pumpkin solution on it. This is one of them. This one has some suction cups on the back. The other one is just sort of like deeper crevices. And then in addition to that, I do intend to be making him some treats, whether it's like blueberries and a popsicle or like whatever. Um, so I got these two molds. This is from Ikea and this is from Walmart uh, to be able to make those. And then the last thing I believe in the food category is this calm. Um, I'm sure if you have ever seen a dog in your life, you don't even have to own one to know what this is. So uh, the blue one is good for puppy jaws. So I'm excited to introduce more of this to him once his tummy troubles are kind of solved. But for now, he hasn't been introduced to very much at all. Oh, here's the other lick mat. Sorry, it's not in the freezer. I just washed it. Here's the other lick mat. And then for his bowls, we originally started him off with this. So there's a water bowl and a food bowl, and this is super cute in my opinion. However, baby boy eats way too fast. Even the chicken and rice, even though it's like sticky, he just like slams it down <laughs> without even breathing. So uh, we got this slow feeder bowl. I think this will come even more in handy when we're going back to the kibble so that he just doesn't suck it down so fast. Now let's move in to other types of grooming, I think would be the next category. Yeah, grooming is the next category. So moving into the next category of grooming, I got this for his uh, claws. I'm not gonna introduce him to this. It's basically like a sander for their claws, like a powered nail file. I'm not gonna introduce him to this for a little while. Right now we're just sort of filing his nails with like a human file because they're still so soft. But eventually, he'll probably need to get his nails trimmed like every week or two. So we bought one to be able to do that ourselves. And in addition to that, we bought uh, additional like grinder pads. Okay, we got puppy shampoo. I've used this once so far. Um, and my first impression of it is although the dog on this bottle is super cute, I don't like this. A lot of Burt's Bees human shampoos, they don't lather because um, I guess the lathering agent isn't like, it's sometimes an irritant. Um, the same is true for the Burt's Bees puppy shampoo. And I found that not only could I not tell if I was getting him clean, but I couldn't tell if I was rinsing it all the way off, which is really important for a dog. So I will use this up, but I probably won't repurchase it. Then I have this. We have a dog who is half a little more than half poodle. So he's gonna have that poodle coat, which means he's gonna need to be brushed all the time and conditioned all the time. So I got this spray to help kind of demat and silkify his fur when we're brushing him. The breeder gave us this, which is a shampoo and conditioner set. Um, I used the conditioner, haven't used the shampoo yet. I have a brush which is designed specifically for poodle and doodle fur. Right now with his fur being so soft, this is really irritating to his skin. So I actually just ordered like a little, almost like a Barbie brush, but like dog sized. It's just really soft bristles to get him used to what it feels like to be brushed before we upgrade to this. Uh, but this is in standby for when he's a bit older. And then lastly in the grooming department, this might be something that we don't end up using. We might opt for chews and like breath spray, but I did want to try and get him desensitized to brushing teeth when he's probably around 12 weeks old is when we'll start. So I did buy this. Um, of all of the things that I've purchased, this is the one that I am the least confident about <laughs> being able to comfortably use consistently, but I do wanna try getting him acclimated to having his teeth brushed, so I did buy this. Um, so that is it for the grooming category.
Let me take a quick pause and clean some of this up and then we're going to move on to general supplies. And I have a couple of kind of odd ones, which I will explain in just a minute. Moving on to generalized supplies, this is stuff that's either related to training or related to his age and safety in some way, which I will explain in just a second. Okay, <clears throat> so starting off with age and safety, dogs under, I wanna say it's 24 weeks old, are not fully vaccinated from Parvo. And if you don't know what Parvo is, uh, it is something that pretty much will kill your puppy if they get it. It's a very hardy viral infection that lives in the soil and in the stool of infected animals. So up until the point that they're fully vaccinated from Parvo, veterinarians recommend not letting your dog put their mouth or paws on the ground like anywhere. That's not your own backyard. So you can't take them on walks. When you go to the vet, you want to kind of hold them, whatever it may be. However, the period of time from eight weeks to 24 weeks is a very important time to introduce them to a lot of stuff so that they're not afraid of it later in life, whether it's meeting different people, going to different environments, whatever it may be. So in order to sort of be able to have the best of both worlds, I actually purchased two things for this problem but one of them I'm gonna be returning. So let's start with the return. I purchased this, which is a foldable wagon that I'm gonna be returning because eventually I wanted to teach my dog to sort of settle. Um, and then I was gonna be able to wagon him around everywhere and he would get to be desensitized to things without being at high risk of parvo. However, I also bought what I'm about to show you. And what I'm about to show you not only was cheaper, but because it's such a limited time, I think it's gonna be better. So what I'm keeping is this little doggy <laughs> backpack. So you put your puppy in and it's good for like a decent range of size of dog. So I don't know how big he's gonna get by 24 weeks, but I imagine he would still fit in here pretty okay. So I can carry him on my chest he can meet all kinds of different situations without being at high risk of parvo. And because this was $30 and the wagon was 80, and I'm not necessarily confident in my ability to teach him how to sit stay when he's like so young, because I want to start introducing him to, him to stuff like right away. And he knows how to sit, but stay is a, uh, it's a skill that he learns later on. And I want to, anyway. All of that is to say, I'm returning the wagon. I have this, which looks really stupid when you're carrying your puppy around, but if it helps them not die of parvo, then whatever. Next, I have his inside leash. So when he is not in this pen or in his crate upstairs, he's hooked up to this inside leash that I've cut the handle on. And this is just so that I can have a little bit more control over him because puppies, like small children, you close your eyes, they disappear, and they're causing mayhem in your house. So this kind of helps me prevent a lot of that from happening. I have this puppy leash that came in the puppy pack that our breeder gave us. It's just a very small leash that we're using right now while he's so small in the backyard to kind of teach him a few leash skills in sort of a more natural way. I have these. It came in a pack of two, one for my husband and one for me. These are just training pouches. I wasn't going to buy these at first because it felt a little silly, like I could just carry Tupperware with me and do training, but <laughs> I'm really glad that I did purchase these because you never know what moment is going to be a teachable moment, whether it's like redirecting him from eating something that you don't want him to eat or redirecting him from resource guarding because you don't want him to resource guard his toys, whatever it may be. Having this like on me like all day has been very helpful. So this is something I was on the fence about and I'm glad that I did purchase. So my husband and I both have one and they came with extra straps if you wanted to wear it as a purse instead of like a belt. Okay, moving on. I have this bowl, which is just a travel bowl. It actually came with these and I didn't know that this was gonna come with those for free, which is, it's a nice gift, but I had already purchased this travel bowl from Ikea. So I guess either we're gonna declutter one or one is gonna live in the car and one is gonna live like somewhere else. I haven't decided yet. 
We have a clicker for clicker training from our breeder. I don't prefer clicker training. I prefer using the word yes as a reward over the clicker just so that I don't constantly have to have another thing tethered to me. So this I'm probably gonna donate soon. And that being said, I actually have two clickers. Um, so, oops. Okay, next I have a slip lead. I have not purchased his adult sized leash or his adult sized collar yet but I did purchase a slip lead, which if you don't know, is a lead that goes a little bit higher on your dog's neck, and it's specifically for training leash manners. So um, when he's a little bit bigger, we'll introduce him to that. I also have some carabiners to be able to tie the leash on my hips for when we're walking and doing some of that together. So carabiners, just kind of nice for that. This, I got secondhand along with a couple of other items from Facebook Marketplace. Actually, the lick mats I got secondhand in addition to this. Um, you hang it on the leash and you can string like a poop bag through there and then you don't have to hold it. It's being held by your leash. I have tick keys, which are good for dogs and humans for removing ticks. So you just sort of like put it on and then snap the tick off and it removes the tick a little bit more safely than if you were to just pluck it out with tweezers. I have a bag of, or a box of poop bags. Um, not really an explanation needed there. And then some things that aren't featured here because they're either in the washing machine or they're with him or they're a little bit too cumbersome to bring. Oh, sorry, just kidding, last thing. I got this cleaner. Um, it works. This cleaner does work to get rid of the smell of urine. However, it smells like poison for about 48 hours. So just know that going in. Um, it's actually, it smells like bug spray mixed with baby powder is the, the closest representation that I can come up with. But um, this is the out stain and odor. It works so far. Um, just know that it kind of has an off smell for like 24 or 48 hours if you do decide to use it. And then training pads, which we have not needed yet because when we are both out of the house, it's only ever for like an hour at a time and we put him in his crate um, and he hasn't had an accident yet. When he's in here, either me or my husband are close enough by to be able to let him out in kind of a timely manner. So we haven't needed these yet. Maybe we won't need them, but uh, it's open because I thought I was gonna need one, but we didn't. So, so far I haven't used that, I can't give a review. Okay, um, so some things not mentioned here. I got, I'm gonna put a picture of it here. This is a stuffed animal that has a heartbeat and a heat pack. And I originally gave this stuffed animal to the breeder a week before we were gonna pick up the puppy so that it could get the smell of the litter and it would be more comfortable for him to sleep at night. It has a heartbeat, which I don't know if you can hear that, but it beats, so it kind of simulate, it, it's, it's, what is the word I'm looking for? It simulates? I'm gonna get this while I'm editing. Simulates, Jesus. It simulates the heartbeat of mom, and then there's this heat pack, and it's like kind of sleeping next to a warm dog. Um, we found that he took to his crate pretty well, and with the little litter-scented blanket that was given to us from the breeder, we found that we didn't need, we used it for like two days, and we noticed that he didn't really care about it. So um, we still have it. I actually went to return it, and similar to the treats, Chewy just said, if your dog's not into it, go ahead and donate it to a shelter. So that's probably what we're gonna do because he really doesn't care about it at all. Um, then we have this, which is like a playpen for dogs. Um, not really a lot of explanation needed, just have to... The thing with a dog, unlike a baby, is not that babies aren't hard. I just think that puppies have a little bit of a steeper immediate learning curve for this specific reason. If you put a baby down, you know where they are. <laughs> If I put my puppy down, he can teleport to anywhere in the house very, very quickly. So when I'm doing things, I put him, or even if I'm leaving the room for a little bit, I'll put him in here. 
Um, it's pretty spacious for his size currently, and hopefully when he grows up, he won't need it anymore. Um, and in there is a little carpet from Ikea, because we learned from the breeder that while puppies are growing and their growth plates and their bones are developing, it's not really healthy for them to be sliding around the wood floor all the time. So this just gives them a little bit of traction in there, and then we actually have two or three of those littered around the house uh, for traction as well. Um, going in next, I bought three crates because when you're crate training, a big tip to be able to make sure that your dog isn't going to the bathroom within their own crate is to make sure the crate is appropriately sized for the dog. And that can be really annoying because when they're a puppy, they're growing so fast and it can be really expensive. And if you remember in the beginning of the video, I said I was going to give you some tips to save some money on some of these big ticket items. This is that tip. I did try to get this on Facebook Marketplace. That's another tip. I wasn't successful, but you might be. For the crates, I went to a local shelter like the ASPCA or something like that. And a lot of times they will be selling used crates for very cheap. So I'm gonna insert some footage here of what the three crates look like, but I have one that's puppy sized that I actually got for free. And once he's outgrown it, I do intend to donate it back. I have this size over here that I'm going to also insert some footage of, and this is gonna be his next size up. And then I have the big one because he is suspected to be anywhere between 45 and 75 pounds when fully grown. And the reason that I bought all three crates right away is because when you are buying these crates secondhand, you can't always guarantee the quality of the crate you want is gonna be available. So in the months leading up to getting him, I was there just every couple weeks looking for the quality crates that I wanted. And then when I saw one in a size that I knew I would need, I just, I just bought it and I washed them. So there's that. I also have this bed back here, which is gonna be his adult bed size. It's just sort of like a spring, comfortable, like elevated bed. I, have, I originally, <laughs> stuttering, I originally purchased that bed for the same reason that I purchased the green wagon. I was gonna take this for outings to have him be able to relax on it and not be at risk of parvo. But I did realize that it's very cumbersome to travel with, so I'll probably be using a blanket or something like that for that same use. And then this will just be his bed when he's older. Um, and I do believe that's it. Let's see, bed, three crates, ah, oh, blankets. I got some blankets at a garage sale for him just so he can have blankets to lay on um, that are not so expensive or beautiful that or like you know just blankets that he can kind of throw up on or pee on or whatever and we don't care um, so I got a couple of those at a garage sale for like a dollar each I'll insert some footage here if you guys care about the blankets but we have one that's like Christmassy themed um, one that has little dog paw prints on it etc and then the last thing is a backyard pooper scooper um, which I'll insert a picture of here. So far his poops have been too small and or too runny to be able to use it, but the contraption seems to be working as intended. So yeah. Okay, you guys, I'm going to have to film the things that I decided not to purchase. So the anti-haul a different day because we are coming up on Bailey Bean's bedtime or not bedtime, dinner time right now. And I do like to keep to his schedule so that he can sort of thrive in the environment that we're providing for him. So it's gonna be the same video for you and only one second's difference, but I'm gonna be looking different for the anti-haul portion of this video. So I'll see you there. This is the anti-haul portion of the video. I have photos of everything that I was, not everything, but a lot of things that I was recommended that I decided not to buy and why. So I'm gonna put some pictures here and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so starting off, this is the brand Paw Tree Treat Dust, like treat or uh, food topper. So it's basically like a flavored topper to put on top of kibble so that your dog isn't eating the same kibble all of the time, getting bored with it, and then maybe not being interested in the kibble, especially when they're puppies and they're trying to grow. So the reason that I didn't think that I needed to buy this was because any bag of treats that like has crumbs at the bottom can be turned into treat dust. I also intend to, once his stomach can handle it, 
feed him different types of whole foods and vegetables that are good for dogs, like cucumbers, blueberries, bell peppers, things like that. So it just didn't feel necessary for me, and it was also kind of expensive from the brand that was recommended by the breeder. Okay, going in number two is this CBD Chew Toy Bone. I have nothing against CBD or marijuana really at all. Um, I just didn't think it was necessary. I had other things that we had already purchased to help him be calm and comfortable in his crate at night, and also just in general, and I didn't wanna have too many crutches along the way and also CBD dog bone, the reviews were kind of mixed where some people were saying it was pretty much useless and other people were saying that it helped their dog when they were teething. I just don't feel like it would necessarily help that much more for teething than any other teething toy or like chew toy of that sort. So it just felt a little unnecessary to me so I decided to not buy it. Next on here is actually a slow feeder bowl that I ended up buying a different kind of. When I originally started recording this video I believe I hadn't purchased that bowl yet. I was hopeful that he wasn't going to be a super super fast eater or a super super fast drinker. He's good drinking. Uh, we don't need to get like a slow water bowl but as far as his food, he sucks it down so fast that it's been causing bloating and some discomfort in his tummy. So we did buy a slow feeder, um, and when he gets older, we'll buy him a bigger one. So this was gonna be an anti-haul uh, item, but it's not now. <laughs> okay, and like I said, we have right here is the slow water feeder bowl. Um, I was just sort of hoping when we got this puppy that he would drink water and eat food at like a reasonable rate and I got 50% lucky. This water bowl is basically for dogs that suck down water so fast and make like a huge mess everywhere. So it can help them A, not suck down water so fast and B, not make a huge mess everywhere. And he has some drips by his water bowl, but we just wipe it up at the end of the day and so far it's not been a big deal. Perhaps when he gets older, that'll change. But for now, this was a no buy for me. And I think it was like $25, $30, so it just, it didn't feel necessary. Okay, next is this very specific chew toy stuffed animal. And I don't recall exactly all of the like special extra things it does beyond just like a regular stuffed animal chew toy. But I remember when I was reading it, it didn't feel worth the price tag. So um, I decided to not get this very overpriced chew toy stuffed animal and I got some other ones instead. Next are these door bells to help your dog learn to ring them to go out to go to the bathroom. And I've heard mixed reviews on these like door bells for dogs. I've heard some people say that it can really aid in the dog being able to let you know that they have to go to the bathroom. I've also heard reviews where people say that the dog constantly rings it just because the dog likes being outside and that it actually ends up regressing the potty training because the owners can't tell if the bell is being rung to go to the bathroom or to just go play outside. So we decided to forego that and actually right now he's about, we've had him for about a week and a half and because of his tummy troubles, he's been going to the bathroom so much more often which has sort of sped up his potty training progress I think, which I guess is the silver lining when your puppy's feeling sick. Sorry, he's right over there. But, um, he, what he does is he goes over to the door and he just sits down because right from the beginning pretty much as soon as we taught him how to sit we taught him to sit to go outside and go to the bathroom to sit to get his meals etc so he'll just walk right over there and sit i will say what happened today after he got an injection of fluids because he was dehydrated due to his tummy troubles he has a he has a parasite right now that's apparently like very common in dogs um, especially dogs with very little immunity, but he's, he's being taken care of. You don't have to worry about him. But because they injected him with fluids, he was like <laughs> going to the bathroom a lot more often. And normally I have about a minute when he sits at that door for me to notice and let him out. Um, I had about 0 0.5 seconds this time before he went by the door, right in front of the door. <laughs> um, that is all to say that uh, I think what we're doing is pretty good. We're eventually going to advance on that to where he comes to get us to tell us he goes to the bathroom. But we've only had him like a, a week and a couple of days. And for the majority of that, he's been sick. So we've been trying to not be so pushy with his training. We're just trying to let him rest and kind of recuperate. But um, all of that is to say, I decided to not opt for the bells if I need them later because I find 
in this two-story house, it's easier to have the bells to be able to hear them when he has to go to the bathroom. I probably would consider purchasing them. I just didn't think they were necessary right now and possibly ever. Okay, next is this slicker brush. Now I know that there are slicker style brushes similar to the one that I did purchase and I showed you guys earlier in this video. This is the, what I think is the brand name slicker brush. And it's really, really good for poodle and doodle fur. The design of it is like patent in some way. I don't really know much about it. But the brush, when I last checked, was 85 US dollars. And that to me just felt way, way, way too much, especially because there's items that are like dupes, slicker style brushes that, as far as reviews go, are comparable or at least good enough to get the job done. So I don't know what it is about this brush that's so much more magical than a slicker style brush. So maybe one day I'll buy it, but I've been brushing him, you know, every night with a puppy brush and I intend to brush him every night with the slicker style brush. And unless I see some sort of a major issue, I don't intend to spend almost 90 US dollars on a brush for my dog. Um, I don't know about you, but that just sounds crazy to me. <laughs> okay, next is this brand of a tractor spray for urine. And similar to the Bells, I just thought that it might regress his house training a little bit. A lot of people, when they get a puppy, maybe they work, so they have to keep the puppy home for a majority of the day. They have the puppy pads, they have the spray to kind of help the puppy know where to go, or maybe even they spray it in the backyard. I work from home, so it's been, I don't want to say easy, because my work has definitely gotten interrupted um, as I've been adjusting to him and my husband's working from home. His work has got interrupted as we're adjusting, but we've just been taking him out frequently, giving him lots of rewards when he goes outside and sort of being um, upset, I guess. <laughs> we don't like rub his nose in the urine, we just sort of clean it up and we're like, no, that's not what you do. Um, but that has worked out to be enough. I just didn't, and I kind of knew that going in when we got him that I would be taking him out really frequently. So we just didn't feel the need to buy this attractor spray so that he went on a specific pee pad in the house because he was being left alone for like a good part of the day because he's not. Um, and I don't foresee needing this in the future. So uh, yeah. Also the reviews were very good. So kind of three strikes against it. Okay, next, the breeder recommended this specific tug toy that's very industrial along with a couple of others. And I just thought while well, he's a puppy, he doesn't need something that industrial right now. And I also want to, as we're training him, make sure that he's not like resource guarding his toys or his food before introducing a like really kind of industrial tug toy of like pull. Because if they're resource guarding and then you introduce tug of war, it's not really a game for them in the same way that it is for the human playing it. So I didn't want to introduce too much tugging until I know that he's not going to resource guard his toys or his food. Um, so this is another thing that maybe one day, especially if he's a really powerful chewer, this might be a good one. But as of right now, and foreseeably for the first 12 months of his life. I, I don't think he needs something like this. Okay, and then the very last on the anti-haul list is this harness. I've heard good things and bad things about harnesses. From what I hear from like a lot of dog trainers is people use harnesses on dogs who have never been properly leash trained to keep them from pulling. It can also be used as a training aid to teach your dog to not pull. The option that I've decided to go with is the slip lead that I was talking about earlier in this video. I intend to train a lot in the backyard and then once he's vaccinated in the front yard and you know everywhere else with the slip lead most predominantly and treats and positive reinforcement. I also, which I think I forgot to mention in the video before, got a 25 foot leash that we both use in the backyard just to keep him tethered but we're also gonna use it for recall training so that he can go kind of off in a distance and then we can practice him coming when being called. Um, so I just didn't see the need for this harness in addition to the other things we were already gonna be doing. If it comes up where I need it, I'll obviously buy it, but for right now, it's definitely gonna stay on the anti-haul list. All right, and that's gonna be it for the haul and anti-haul for this sweet boy right here. Um, and with all of that being said, we will see you next week in another video. Bye. Bye, YouTube.
he wants to say bye, but he's feeling sick right now, which is why I came over here to film the outro. But, um, yeah, he'll be fine. Don't worry about him. He's being well taken care of. But, uh, yeah, bye. See you soon. <laughs>